one thing we need to realize is that our stability comes from God. Yeah? For those of us who thought that everything is going well now, you know, good days are coming, and uh, everything is going to be perfect, and some of us must have made all our plans. 2019 is going to be like this. 2020 is going to be like this. By 2022, I'm going to do this. By 2025, I'm going to achieve this. And by 2030, I will be roaming with my milk. You must have made all your plans and everything must have been perfectly designed. But I want to let you know, and I think this situation, the, the crisis that the world is facing today has taught everyone that there is no stability in the world. That our stability is in God. You know, for us who are stable in God, for those who worked on our walk with God, even in this crisis, I can tell you one thing, that you're still joyful. Even in this crisis, you still can see what God had planned and purposed for you coming to pass. None of us can ever, you know, for those who've built, their, you know, worked on their stability with God, we've not gone to a backup plan. We are still walking on that original plan because we held on to God. You know, we all keep backup plans. I don't think anybody here, only a fool would not keep a backup plan. But we never turned to, we've never turned to a backup plan. If your stability is in God, you've never had the opportunity to use the next four stones. You get what I mean to say? David took five stones, right? David took five stones. But he knew his God, right? When he looked at Goliath, he did not look at the five stones and say, Pans, ha. Pans, ka bar ko ka pans gyon. I'll use all my five and I'll finish you. No. He said, God is going to finish you. Because he knew he was rooted, grounded in God. And there was no need for him to use the next four. That one was enough. That one plan that he had was perfect, was perfect for him. And that's why today I, I, I want to encourage us and you know, uh, lead us, direct us to know that if you are stable, in the presence of God, if you're working on seeking or living or dwelling in the presence of God, you will not need to turn to a backup plan. If Psalm 91 is your life, if that is your lifestyle, if that is the pattern of your life, Psalm 91 verse 1, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he who abides, he who dwells, he who dwells, he who dwells in the presence of God, then there is no way that any other plan will ever want to, you know, you will ever want to um, execute except the plan that God has kept for you. In Psalm 91 he says, plagues may come, famine will come, pestilence will come, Thousands will fall, but I'm still walking on that plan. You know, the beauty of the presence of God, when you look at the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament, when you look at the Holy of Holies, the Holy of Holies was the innermost sanctuary. It was the innermost sanctuary, not the outer. Uh, the outer court, you see many Christians are on the outer court. And that's why outer court is open to everything happening in the world. You are in God, but everything affects you. The holy place, the holy place is a very good place. That's also close to holy of holies, but it's also exactly between the, the outer court and the holy of holies. And for that, you have to keep going back to the outer court to refill the bread, refill the oil. You have to keep going in and out. So there is possibilities of it affecting you. But if you dwell in the holy of holies, the very presence of God, nothing else is there. Even the light that is there comes from God. The glory that is there, the presence of God that hovers there, nothing of the world ever affects you. And that's where we need to be. We need to be grounded in God. If you and I are grounded in God, you can be sure 
that what God has kept for you, what God has planned for you, what God has birthed in your heart, that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, you will see that all your plans for 2020 have gone off. Some of us have begun to postpone it also. Or maybe not now, next year. But for us who are grounded in God, we know that all things work together for my good. Everything has a purpose. Well, this is not my subject, actually. I can go on in this. But let's go to what I want to speak. It's in, uh, maybe a little in line with this. Let's open up our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. And if you can, maybe we can all read it. If you can see it on the screen or maybe if it, you can read it from, the, from your Bible. But let's be loud when we read it. And for those who are watching us, you too read it loud wherever you are. Let it get into your ears. Okay, let's read it. One, two, three. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Woo! Come on, let's read it again. I think you've not got it. I think you've not got what, I, what, what the scripture is saying. Let's read it. Okay, one, two, three. But as it is written... What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Isn't that exciting? Not yet excited. Let's read it again. I, it has to get in you. You know, you know come on. You know, if somebody would say that, you know, the table is beautifully spread, what food, man? Right now, what is placed, the scripture that's placed before you, you can call it a beautiful spread. A beautiful spread. Let's read it again. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Now I can see it sunk in a little. The last portion reads, God has prepared. What? God has, that means for those who love God, God has prepared something for you. You know, if you, a few days back, one of our church persons visited a house and from, for Shweta's birthday, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, they asked, what's there for, what's there for food? So she said, uh, uh, rice, I think pulao and stew. Oh, I thought there would be zong, tongue, tongue. <laughs> I thought there would, there would be tongue. The person, I believe, came expecting, I'm going to eat tongue because Shweta has prepared tongue for us. Well, that after a few days, Shweta did prepare the tongue and send it to the person. But the thing is, we need to understand when God is saying that it is prepared, means it is already kept, ready. That if I love God, that if I love God, God has already kept something ahead. You know, we are, we, are, we are seeing the pandemic right now, but God has already seen it and kept something ready ahead for you and me. We are only seeing the pandemic and we are getting shaken by it, baby. <laughs> What's going to happen? You know, a few days back, the banker was calling me and I don't like anybody calling me and saying, you owe me. I don't like that. And the banker uh, first call came, I think maybe on Tuesday or something. He said, and it's all become call centers now. You know, bankers have lost the personal touch. It's gone. Now because they cannot ask money direct, they tell the call center, call them and call, <laughs> ask the money. So the banker calls. Why did you not pay your, uh, my, your EMI? It's due. 12 days have passed. First call finished. After, after two days, another call comes. You're, uh, you're for this place, Gera. It's past 10 days you have not made your payment. When should I expect it to happen? 
You see, this is all news for us. But God already knew this is going to happen. But the beauty that God, you know, in, and that last week of mine was the most horrible week. In fact, I was like, this is too much. I can't take it, God. I can't, you know, I don't mind doing anything in faith. But I don't like somebody coming to my door and saying, you, you have to give me now. So I, I, I sat with God. Uh, and I was like, this is, this is not the way I want it. Huh? You better do it my way. <laughs> but then God said, well, you, there's nothing as your way. I've already prepared the way. You can't see it now, but I've already done it. So what we are seeing right now, you've lost your job. You've got no money. Your children seem to be not going to school. What's happening to the education? Appa, kide zaapa, ha. Uh, the, the health issues that are happening. All these things around us may be bogging us down, but it's not bogging God because God has already prepared something ahead for you and me. But the only thing is those who love him, that's the key, right? Those who love him, the things that he has kept for you, unbelievable, unimaginable unfathomable. You cannot even think about it. But the problem with us is we are so caught up with what's happening that we miss what God is planning. I want us to turn our Bibles to Genesis 42 and I want us to today just take a magnifying glass and look at the life of Jacob. And I've been speaking on famine for the past two or three classes. Sessions, I think. And I'm going to continue on this subject only, famine. Yeah, and my subject today is titled, actually, the first thing I had put was famine. So it was like, famine? But God has already prepared for it. Yeah, so it's like, for us, famine is a shock, right? So, famine? But God has already prepared for it. You got the message now, what I'm saying? Let me say that. Maybe my expressions are not very clear. Famine? But God has already prepared for it. How many of us we not even expect, not even dream that for nearly a year the world is going to be shut down? We never thought about such a type of famine, right? What happened in 1912, 1913, 1918, whatever those years, eh, it's never going to come to us now. But it came. And nearly a year we are on shutdown. Everybody may be, may be saying economy is good, economy is good, but you know your pockets how good they are. That's ground reality. But the good news is God has already prepared for it. But God has already prepared for it. When we look into Genesis 42 verse 2, let's read from verse 2. And it says there, and he said, now Jacob Jacob said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live and not die. What is the perception of Jacob? What is he seeing for his life? He's seeing, if they don't go now to Egypt to buy, to sustain themselves, they are going to die. So what, Joseph, what Jacob is speaking is, Jacob is speaking, I have to survive. I have to do something to survive. Jacob is just saying, let's survive. Let's somehow come out of it. Some of us might be saying, no. Let's somehow 2020 pass. Afterwards, we'll be fine maybe. Somehow, this financial year closes. Next financial year, everything will sort out maybe. When we listen to news, they say, nothing will be sorted out till the vaccine comes. Ah, so somehow let the vaccine come and then we will start having a normal life. And here Jacob is like, come on man, we need to survive. It's a bad time, it's a bad season. But I want to tell you, God has better plans. Jacob thought of survival, but God thought of thriving. Jacob taught of surviving, God planned thriving. You are planning surviving, no? 
you are planning somehow i'll pay my loan like how i was thinking last week somehow what to do shweta i was sitting with shweta and shweta saying why are you thinking i said no david took five stones i'm thinking which are my four stones left <laughs> actually sat down and said see planning is good david planned he said one stone doesn't work four i'll take the next four so ah, so we right now maybe many of us are thinking how will i survive this year but i want to tell you god does not want you to uh, survive in this season he wants to see you thriving he has made a plan already he's prepared it for you when you look at jacob's story they were he was right now verse 2 he's thinking let's survive let's survive but god has a plan when you look at psalms 37 verse 23 this we spoke last sunday it says there the steps of a man are established by the lord when he delights in his ways the steps of a man are ordered by god now we see jacob's life what god is saying i have ordered i have established i have set the path for jacob's story now when you look at jacob's story jacob's the plan for this famine God's preparation for this famine began not in Genesis 42 it began in Genesis 37 when Jacob's one son was put into the pit and that one son was then sold as a slave and that that one son was put from the slave then he was falsely accused and then put into prison and that one son from the prison was put into the palace but this preparation was done for whom not for joseph joseph was one of the people but it was done for jacob and jacob's generations to come god prepared a plan for the famine god not just prepared that plan he planned that they would not survive but thrive in that famine so when we look at our situation come on look at it from god's perspective look at it from god's perspective even much before way ahead you don't need somebody to come and prophesy and say 2023 you are going to get your job 2025 you lose your job 2027 famine is coming do you don't need anybody to tell you that you just need to stay with god and god will order your footsteps sometimes if you want God, he did not speak only over me that i would face this crisis you don't need you need god to speak over you you need god to direct you know sometimes we have people talking and talking you're going to get prosperous you're going to get your job you're going to get this you're going to get that and we speak but you have you have not been obeying god how it's going to come to pass god is telling you walk straight you're walking left god tells you now take a right you take a uh, you you take a left god tells you go down you climb up how can you expect your life to be uh, blessed and ordered by god when you are not listening to the commands of god here we see god directing joseph preparing a plan for his people so when you talk famine but god already prepared a plan for me god has prepared it he is prepared and look into the life of jo Jacob once again you look at the preparation of God Jacob now for God to prepare him for the famine Jacob experiences a loss he loses his favorite son for Jacob Joseph was his favorite son he gave Joseph the robe of many colors he was very partial to Joseph he loved him more than everyone else but jacob lost joseph but the question is did he really lose joseph yes physically he lost joseph but he met him later on but if you think about it though it seemed that jacob is losing joseph but in reality god was preparing a plan in romans 8 verse 28 we say what all things work together for our good 
it says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For that moment, maybe Jacob must have said, yes, my only son is gone. My favorite son is gone. My best son is gone. I gave him the best I had and now I'm, 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 I'm at loss. But God was working a good work. Preparing. He was preparing not for Genesis 37, not for Jacob, I mean Joseph's story, not for Joseph to be king or second in command. He was preparing for his people to be saved. He was preparing for his people to not survive but thrive in famine. He was preparing. I want to tell you, each one of us who's watching, who each one of us who's here, don't sulk at what is happening right now. You are not going to survive. You are going to thrive if you love God. If God is the center of your life, if God is your stability, if you are founded in God, if God is your foundation, you are not going to be shaken. This famine, this situation, this season is not come to Tear you apart, but it's going to take you up higher in God. Jacob saw loss, but God used it all for his good. When we see, when we see in Genesis 42, verse 2 again, we see <coughs> it says there. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt. And now, see what he says. Go down and buy grain for us there. Go down and buy. That means now here J Jacob is saying, uh, it's time to only spend, no income. Yeah? Famine, right? Famine means no water is there. No food, no provisions. That means cattle are also going to die. All your bonds, the bonds are empty. They have the money. You know, sometimes we have, we have all the assets. But, you know, when you were locked down in your house, you had all the money, but grocery was not there. <laughs> yeah. You had all the money, but fish was not there. Meats were not there. Here now, Jacob, He's got the assets. He's got money. And now he's saying what? Go to Egypt, buy. You know, if you keep buying, 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 buying with no income, you will get, your resources will start going off, right? Everything will get down, 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 down. Now when you think of it actually, through it all, they are going to Egypt. Even they are going to Egypt to buy the grain. For that moment, Jacob is thinking what? If I was in Jacob's place, okay? I'm, I'm putting my shoes, my feet in his shoes and my, it's only out go, out go, out go. No income, yeah? I have to only buy now grain. I have to only buy, I have to only buy. But I'm sending them to Egypt. Why? God has already prepared something actually in Egypt. I can't see it. I can't see what's happening there, but God has prepared something there. He's prepared something there. We cannot see it. But if you open to Genesis 45, verse 16 to 20, see, see exactly what happens there. <clears throat> it says there, when the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers had come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. Where they had come? They had come to Egypt. Egypt. Next verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, say to your brothers, do this, load your beast and go back to the land of Canaan and take your father and your households and come to me and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you shall eat the fat of the land and you, Joseph, are commanded to say, do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Next verse. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Ooh. It is famine. Joseph is thinking, I'll have to only spend, I think, now. 
Yeah. What is Joseph planning? I have to. I mean, sorry, Jacob planning. I have to only spend. No income. To spend, he's sending his sons all the way to Egypt. God has already prepared something in Egypt. What has he prepared? He's prepared the best land. The best land. The best to be kept for his people. Not the second best. The best. That tells me that when I love God and when I do what God tells me to do, if I obey him, the best is chosen for me. In famine, not in good days. Good days, everybody sees good days. In famine to see good days is, ooh, everybody's eyes pop, you know, pop, pop, poop. In famine to see good days, poop, oh. That's awesome, right? In famine, when somebody looks at you and so, ooh, the best is kept. Not just the best. When you go into 45 verse 18, go to the 18th verse. Who is saying these words here? And take your father and your households and come to me. Who's that? Pharaoh is saying it. And I, who's this? Pharaoh is saying it. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you shall eat the fat of the land. Who's saying it? Pharaoh, a Gentile, an unbeliever, an unrighteous man. He's telling the people of God, I'm going to give you the best. I'm going to see that you are, you know, you eat the fat of the land. I'm going to look after you. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth, a Gentile's wealth, a wicked man's wealth is laid up for the righteous. Let me say that. Maybe you will not get the point very clear. A sinner's wealth, the unrighteous wealth, the wicked man's wealth is laid up for the righteous. You not get it still. So we'll take out the word righteous because we are all righteous in Christ. No? Yeah? We are all righteous in Christ. So you put your name down there. Okay, but the sinner's wealth, the wicked man's wealth, the unrighteous man's wealth is laid up for Michael. The Gentiles who are hoarding, they don't know. God has been preparing them for that, to be a blessing for his people. But that key word is very important, you know, those who love him. Love him. That's very important. Everybody says we are Christians. Everybody says I'm dipped in that water. Just because you're tupuk, you've come tupuk and tupuk out does not, does not show that you love him. How you live every day declares your love for him. Every day, by the way you speak, when you get angry, furr, you get angry. After you get angry, what do you do? That tells you how much you love him. How you react. I'm not saying don't get angry. The Bible says get angry, but don't let the sun set on your anger. These small, small things are love for God. Those who love him, oh, God has prepared it all. We are, we are, the red carpet is kept for us. We are called to be royal priests. Royal. You know what's royal? Kingly people. When you go further, <clears throat> when you look at Jacob, you know, the whole story from Genesis 37, yeah, when you look till verse, till Genesis 40, 45, you will read Jacob and you will find like he's such a, he's going through stress, yeah. Pity that man. He's lost his child, the one he loves so much. Okay? Before that, he had enough stress. He was stressed with two wives. Then he was stressed with Laban. He was stressed with that goats mating and you know all that stuff. What a man he was. Stressed. Fine, that season got over. Now this season starts. This season starts. He's come out from that season with a lot of wealth. Huh? That season, he comes super rich. Now this season, is he's... Experiencing loss again. 
He's experiencing loss. You see, God will always challenge us to move ahead. He'll never keep you in that same place. He never kept Elijah at the brook only. He, he made Elijah get out of that brook. And how to get Elijah out of that brook? You see, Elijah by, by human nature would never leave the brook because the brook is perfect. To make Elijah get out of that brook, he had to dry that brook up. And many a times we will go through the dry spell because God has prepared a plan. He's prepared a plan. And in that entire plan, the widows at Zarephath was blessed. The widow at Zarephath was saying, I'm going to eat my last meal and die. But God has prepared a plan. And you look at Jacob now, he must have gone through so much of stress. He lost his son, Joseph, favorite son, favored son. Now, because of this famine, he's sending his sons to Egypt. The sons come back, one son is left back in Egypt. They go back to Egypt to get the grain. Imagine the stress, oh, one more is gone now. Oh my God, and now I cannot, I cannot, you know, I don't have any other option. I have to send them again to Egypt because Egypt has food. One son is gone, second son is there, now stuck there. They go to Egypt, now they get news that Benjamin is supposed to be left behind. What stressful, the whole story you see is only filled with stress. It looks like they are shaken up. But though they are shaken up, the truth is God has prepared a plan. He's prepared for it all. He's prepared when we, when we turn, uh, turn the... Turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 46, verse 3. It says, Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. What was the plan of God for them to go to Egypt? That they would become a great nation. He used famine he used that dry season. He used that season where everybody is struggling and suffering and everybody is in lack. He's using that season to shift his people, move them to Egypt to make them a great nation. God has a plan. He's prepared for it. Whatever you and I are facing, whatever this season is throwing upon us, God has prepared for it. And we who love him, we will see it. We may not understand it right now, but as we walk step by step with him, we will see it. So we see here, God is telling him, you're going to become a great nation. Famine. Famine they are going through. God is using it to lift them up. When we go into Genesis 42 verse 2 again, we see there, okay, <coughs> Genesis 42 verse 2 and he said behold I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt go down and buy grain for us that we may live and not die you see behold I when you look at the word I it speaks about the responsibility of a man it speaks about a responsibility he's pressured he's going through stress he's he uh, he he needs to 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 somehow take his family, his household through that season. You know, some of us are so stressed, right? You know, when those callers came, why callers? Even much before, now it's time for me to plan to take my children to Pune. And it's like, you know, I, there, are, there, are, there are days that I will sit and I'll just, how it's going to happen? How will it happen? How will you work it out? How will, because things are not the same as it was in January. Things have changed for us as well. But then what stirs me up is God has already prepared for this. God has already made his plan. And being the head of the house, the pressure, the responsibility, the stress that we go through, each one who is going through it will, you know, you know exactly what we are speaking on. But when you go to Genesis chapter 46 verse 4, it says there, I myself will go down with you. What God is saying is, though Joseph, I mean Jacob feels he's alone in that, in that famine, 
God is telling him, no, you are not alone, Jacob. I am with you. I am with you. And not just I am with you, he goes further. I myself will go down with you to Egypt. I will also bring you up again. That means I'm going to take you to Egypt, but I'm going to bring you back again. Now, he's not speaking to only Jacob. He's speaking to the generations that will come through Jacob. So God is now not only preparing for Jacob, he's preparing for the next generation. He's making plans ahead. So when we have a God like this, when we have God who's, who's, who's so, you know, who, who plans every minute detail of our life, if we submit to him, that he knows your famine time, and through that famine he will lead you and take you to a place, a position of plenty, not just leave you in plenty, but, but from there he will prepare you for your next. When we have a God who's prepared it all, he's prepared for it. He's prepared. That this season is not a shocker for him. So when we have such a God, then why should we look left and right? And I want to encourage you. This entire promise, this entire 1, one Corinthians, go to the beginning, the first verse that I showed you. He says, what God has prepared for those who love him. That's all you should be worried about. Do I love God? Spend time with God. Pray. Read the word. Grow in God. Fellowship with fellow Christians. Stir one another up to draw closer to God. Get that in order and everything that God has prepared, you will begin to see it. That's all that you and I need to stress about. Don't stress about your food. If crows are being fed, he will feed you. He, you. You may not get your full meal today, may not get it tomorrow, but third day at least you will get it. That's assured. He will look after his people. Don't stress about what you're going to wear. Don't stress about your job. Don't stress about your children. Stress about one thing is, did I sit with God today? Did I hear from God today? Did I read his word today? Oh God, I did not read your word. Please God, help me get back. If you have not prayed, oh God, I missed my prayer time. Oh my, that guest came and messed it up. That should be our stress. That should be the things that should occupy our mind. Because when we set that in order, everything else will fall in place. You set your walk with God right, everything falls in place because it's clearly spoken. He has prepared for those who love Him. He's prepared it. This famine, He has prepared it for us. He knows when to provide, what to provide, how to give it. He knows it all. You know, like Jacob, we get stressed by what we see. Oh, it looks like this is my end now. For some of us, what we see is like, I hope I survive this. For some, for some of us, when what we see is it's only it's only spending, 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 nothing for income. What what are we going to do? How long can I survive? How long will I, you know, continue like this? What we see is what moves us. But I want to tell you, don't let what you see stress you. Don't let it stress you. Let God and God alone rule you. Let God and God alone walk with you. Draw near to God. Walk with Him. Talk to Him. Live in Him. Abide in Him. And you will begin to see how what He has prepared, He will bring it to pass. The people of Israel, Jacob and his children, in famine, God took them to Egypt and they came out prosperous from Egypt prosperous a gentile nation they went into and came out rich when you look into exodus they came out with the wealth of all of the people of egypt they went in famine they went in without knowing what's their future going to be but god had prepared it for them i want to challenge us today let you know I think when we get up, if you have not prayed, the first thing you should be, oh God, forgive me, I did not pray today. Please give me some time slot. You know, that, that guest who's supposed to come or those friends are supposed to come, cancel their meetings. I prefer not to talk to them. I want to talk to you, God, first. 
If I've not spent time reading the word, let, let you know, switch off the TV, shut that door, read the word, meditate on it, abide, chew on it. Why? Because that is, that is, if that is set right, everything else will fall right. We want to set everything else right, forgetting this. This, the word, prayer, God is our first priority. Everything else will fall in place. For those of us who love God, famine is another great opportunity. You know, as I always said, famine is your opportunity. This is our opportunity. If we love God, He will supernaturally give you favor. Nobody will get it, you will get it. That same business you are doing, then the people have put shop next to you and then put another shop and another shop. You are the only one and now 10, 20 shops have come next to you doing the same business. But only you will get the client. Sometimes you may have nobody, everybody gets, you're not getting it. Well, that also God has a plan. God has prepared it. He set everything in order. We don't stress by what we see. We praise God. We draw near, near to God. And He works everything for my good. And I want to challenge us. Let's... Let's not stress. Just bless. Let's 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 make that this season, the next next three months or four months, whatever we may be we may have to face. Let's make it our kind of a logo, our motto, or whatever. Bless, don't stress. Bless, don't stress. And I believe God will put everything in order. Everything will come in order. You know, when these bankers were phoning me, I was, I was really stressed. I fired them also. And those who know me know how I can fire. In fact, he was fired. I fired in such a way that he had to hang up. He said, normally we, you know, to avoid them, we'll hang up. But he hung up. He couldn't take it. Bless. Don't stress. Last week has taught me that. Don't stress. Just chill. Somebody came to me and said, Brother, take care. Your pressure may go up. I said, I, said, I, said, I negate all these things. This is not for me. Not for me. And immediately this word came to me. Bless. Don't stress. Just bless. Just forget it. Leave it in God's hands. What I cannot, He, he can. What I can, I will. What I cannot, He can. So I just want to encourage you. Keep your eyes on God. Work on that. Everything else will follow. Shall we just stand to our feet? For those who are watching as well, I, want, I just want to encourage you. Focus on God. Focus on God. Let God be the center of it all. Everything else will fall in place. Everything else. Your famine will not destroy you. The famine will not destroy you. God has prepared for it. God has prepared for it. You are going to come out greater, bigger through this season. Father, I lift up each one of us who's watching, who's present here. And you know our situation, God. You know, you know what's happening, God. You know what thoughts keep running in our head. You know the fears, the anxieties. You know the struggles. You know the responsibilities. You know, you know, you know the panic within us. Let me just ask you God to take over. Take over God. There are some things that we cannot do anything about. We ask you to take over. Help us God. Help us to be focused around you. Centered around you. To be drawn closer to you. I pray for each one here. I pray for the ones watching as well. I pray for the healing of their sickness. I pray for people who are going through stress. People who are going through jobless situations. Who lost their jobs. People who have going through financial crisis. I pray for those who are going through uh, emotional problems. Those who are going through, going through relationship problems. I pray for peace, Father. And I pray that your, your presence would abide with them you would direct their path. Lead them and guide them and show them your goodness, God. Show them, God. Let your name shine over their lives, Father God. 
I give you praise for today. I give you praise for this word. I give you praise, God. Keep encouraging us, we pray, God. Especially when our spirits are droopy, when we feel, when we feel hopeless, just stir us up once again, God. Speak, speak to us. We just surrender ourselves to you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, 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 amen.